Welcome to Bible Tract Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracts Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracts, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracts Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracts and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. Hello, my friend. Thank you for joining us today. Here we are, the very middle of the week. I hope your week is going well. Right now, my Bible is sitting open to the book of Leviticus, Leviticus and chapter 18. Leviticus chapter 18, if at all possible, right now reach over, pick up your own copy of the Word of God, and join me there. Leviticus, please, chapter 18. I will read the opening five verses here in just a moment. Also, besides your Bible, get out something on which you can jot some notes. I'll be giving an outline for chapter 18. Not only will you have the ability to jot down the outline for Leviticus 18, but you will have pen and paper ready to jot down our contact information. I have a free gift I want to put into your hands. That free gift is this. The greater ministry of what we do here at Bible Tracks is we publish gospel tracks. I have one in front of me I want to tell you about here in a moment, but I want to give you a free sample of that containing one each of all of our English tracks, and I can't do that unless you contact us with your name and address. I'll say more about that here in just a moment. Let me lead into our Bible study time this way. If I were to begin this verse, most believers could do a pretty good job at finishing it. The verse begins this way, righteousness exalts a nation, but... Now, are you able to finish the verse? The verse is from the book of Proverbs in chapter 14, verse 34, and the rest of the verse, well, the whole verse says, righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. Now, this proverb is not just only one that applies to the nation of Israel. Those words, any people, literally mean any nation. Proverbs 14, 34 is a universal principle. But here in Leviticus chapter 18, we are studying a book directed to the Jewish nation. And as we come to chapter 18, we're going to come to some rules given by God that deal with holiness, holiness in a nation's sexual and marriage practices. If there ever was a passage of Scripture found that confronts the American society in our present day, it's Leviticus chapter 18. What is worse is that, based upon the chapter and God's marriage rules given here, America stands condemned and defiled before God. That's a key word that's used here, defiled. And before we get done, you and I are going to have to stop and ask our own hearts this question. Does God label me? Does God categorize me and my heart as being defiled in his sight? Get your Bible and join me, Leviticus, please, chapter 18. I mentioned the gospel tracts a moment ago. That word tracts is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. I'm referring to a short written presentation of God's plan of salvation. The gospel tract I have in my hand right now is entitled, Have You Found Rest? Have You Found Rest? And it opens with some very famous words spoken by Jesus at the end of Matthew chapter 11. Those words begin this way, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. But after that verse, those verses there, then the writer of the track, which was our founder, goes into a testimony in which he spoke at a church And there at the church, he sat through a Sunday school program, which was taught by a man, the Sunday school superintendent, but the Sunday school superintendent was not born again. He was not a believer. He was religious, but he was not right with God. The other day, I heard a testimony of a person who said he grew up in a home where they prayed not just at the beginning of their meal, they prayed at the end of the meal and read Bible verses each and every day. But guess what? Mom and dad weren't saved, but they were religious. 
that they had a need. There was a burden on their soul. They needed to find rest for their soul. This gospel track will lay out very clearly how to find eternal rest through Jesus Christ for the soul of a lost person. It's a great tool in sharing the gospel. Get it from us, please. At the end of our broadcast, our announcer will give you three ways on how to contact us, or you can go to our website, which is BibleTracksInc.org. Well, if your Bible's open, chapter 18 of Leviticus begins this way. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, I am the Lord your God. And the doings of the land of Egypt, wherein ye dwelt, shall ye not do. And after the doings of the land of Canaan, whither I bring you, ye shall not do. Neither shall ye walk in their ordinances. Ye shall do my judgment. And keep mine ordinances to walk therein. I am the Lord your God. Ye shall therefore keep my statutes and my judgments, which if a man do, he shall live in them. I am the Lord your God. As we come to chapter 18, I find three parts to the chapter to make it into a clear outline. Three parts. Each part begins with a word having the letter D in it. Are you ready? Here we go. The outline for Leviticus 18 goes this way. Part number one is verses one through five. The title there is a distinctive people, a distinctive people. Part number two is verses six through 25. The key word here is defiled. There were described a defiled people. What makes a nation defiled as, as it relates to marriage? Thirdly, verses 26 to 30 is a directed people, a directed people. Verse 26 says this, ye shall therefore keep my statutes and my judgments and shall not commit any of these abominations. There's a great Old Testament word. Now, chapter 18 deals with marriage rules, my friend. It deals with which people were too close in relationship with you that you could not marry them. These marriage rules were given to Israel, but I do see these rules as being the right rules for marriage for every nation. You see, the God of the Bible, he is the inventor. He's the giver of marriage at the beginning. And when he gave it, there were only two people, Adam and Eve. And as people were born unto them, and as the curse of sin had its ongoing deterioration on their genetic code, more marriage rules needed needed to be given, and thus we have here Leviticus 18. First of all, notice in the opening five verses this distinctive people which the Jewish nation was to be. Here in these five verses, God states three basic ideas. I'm going to give a B word for them. One is that the nation belonged to God. They belonged to God. Verses one and two say that. Persistently throughout this chapter, you're going to read these words like the ones you find at the end of verse two, where it says, I am the Lord your God. They belong to God. Since God was their God, then he could set up whatever rules he deemed right in whatever area of life he thought best, and he can still do that. So I ask you, is this God your God? And if he is, are you rebelling against any of his rules that he lays out clearly in Scripture? So we have the belonging to God part in verses 1 and 2, but then... After telling that they belong to him, God then says, here's the basics. That's my second B word. Here's the basics. He gives the general overview of what's going to come in the rest of the chapter. And the basics really come down to these two things in verses 3 and 4. One is that the Jews would not be like the Canaanites or Egyptians, but Secondly, they would keep God's statutes, all right? They belong to God. He gives them the basics. Now, in verse 5 comes the blessing. There's always a blessing that will come if people obey the ways of God. Righteousness exalts a nation, remember? Well, here in verse 5, the blessing is this, you will live, Keeping God's ways brought physical life. Not obeying God's ways brought physical death. That's the basic blunt statement here given in verse 5. 
But then we come to this next section, verses 6 through 25. This is where some important words are found. Three key words are found here. You need to note them. You need to underlight them uh, if you're going to understand this second section of the chapter. The three words are this, the word nakedness. It's used 24 times. I think it's a pretty important word. Then the word uncover, it's used 16 times. And when the passage uses the word uncover, this is a polite reference to human sexual relationships. The third word is the word defiled, and that word means to become morally corrupt. It means to be morally polluted, morally foul before God. Now, pardon me, please, for me not itemizing all the various kinds of physical relationships mentioned here in Leviticus 18. To do that would make me uncomfortable, and it would make some of my radio stations uncomfortable. But all of these immoral relationships get to one particular activity. Listen to me. They get to one particular activity. That activity is they uncover somebody's body. God gave to us the gift of marriage. And with that gift, he gave the gift of physical intimacy. But that intimacy had had clear, strict limits on its use. Open sexuality and free love, as it's often called, these are not godly. They're not moral. In this chapter, three categories of human uh, labeling is done here. Three categories of labeling humanity are given here, and they're all called defiled They all defile because they uncover somebody's body outside of marriage. Are you ready? We're told here that citizens are defiled. That is, people are defiled individually. They defile themselves by their lustful uncovering activity. Number two, the culture becomes defiled. The moral fiber of what is right and wrong in a nation gets skewed, gets off base, and is wrong. And thirdly, this chapter says that even countries, nations, are defiled. If Israel were told in verse 28, if Israel became defiled, God would spew them, God would spit them out of their land. And guess what? God spit them out of their land in great measure because of their immoral practices as it relates to uncovering the bodies of one another. Oh, friend, listen to me. If you or I If you or I are caught in a mindset of looking at the uncovered human bodies, if we get to the place where that is okay to us, then you or I are called defiled before God. Now, I I want to quickly add this. The Bible gives some very clear, practical steps that we can take to clean our stinking thinking and it helps us to have consistent moral victory in our thought life. Would you please contact our office? We can help you with this. We have a whole brochure dealing with some men's institutes, and in those institutes, the very first thing I always teach is this, how can I have consistent moral victory in my thought life? Because you and I cannot afford to be defiled in the eyes of God, our family, and our nation. Amen. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309 828 6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois 61702. Again, our phone number is 309 309- 828-6888 and our mailing address is P.O. Box 188 Bloomington, Illinois 61702 You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S That address is BibleTracksInc.org May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.